Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm playing around with the Mood tool, formerly known as the Color Styles or LUT tool uh, in previous versions of Luminar. But if you look at a photo like this one here, it is under Creative and it's called Mood. And so I thought I would dive into that and do a deep dive here about LUTs because they're actually really useful. It's very different. You can get some cool creative looks that you may not be able to get otherwise. And that's what really LUTs are all about. They're typically used in movies. And by the way, LUT stands for look up table, but it's basically a way for you to remap colors and tones that you may not be able to replicate otherwise. As I said, they're used in movies a lot where they'll do their corrections or whatever. I don't make movies, of course, but they'll make their uh, corrections and whatnot. And then at the end, they want to apply their own style or look to the movie and they'll stick a LUT on it. The cool thing is, of course, you can do this in photography as well. There are different kinds of LUT files, and in fact, if you're in this tool, if you click on Choose LUT, you can either load a custom LUT file. I recommend you do a Google search. If you want to download some LUTs, you can use them here. Or if you want to download new LUT files, you click here. That will take you to Luminar Marketplace, where there are some for sale, and I believe some for free. As you can also see, there are quite a bit of uh, um, quite a few of them built in here that give you a lot of interesting and creative options. As you hover over them, you get the preview, which is also super helpful. So I'm going to start with this one called Candlelight here. And already you can see I've changed the mood quite a bit in the photo. There it is there before and after. I'm going to give this a little bit more. I'm going to maybe give it a little bit more contrast, maybe pull down the saturation. Here's the thing. You don't have to use this tool by itself. You might come in here with Enhance say, I give that a little bit of a bump as well. And then maybe I'm going to come down to color and I'm going to go into saturation. I'm going to pull the blue down a little bit and I've got a very different looking photo to be honest. And I've hardly done anything, but there it is before and there's the current state. So if I do this sliding window, you can see that I've significantly shifted the colors and tones in this photo and really it only took a couple of seconds. So that's part of the power and the fun of the mood tool. Now to be clear, you've got three different options here, which I think are fairly self-explanatory. Amount is how much of the look of the let itself you want applied to the photo. So to the right, you get more of it. To the left, you get less, right? Contrast affects the contrast of the entire image and saturation also impacts the saturation of the entire image. So as I go to the right, it gets a little bit more saturated and to the left, less. And same with contrast. To the right, more contrast. To the left, less contrast. So there are lots of different things you can do. And it doesn't have to just be, you know, it can be applied to any kind of photo. I'll show you a portrait. I'll show you a product shot. Here I've got kind of a landscape. Uh, that last one was kind of a cityscape. But if you come down here, cross-processing used to be its own group of uh, its own tool or own filters. And now they're here inside the LUT tool or the Mood tool, more accurately named. I used to use cross-processing a lot. And in fact, I wanted to give you an example of Seattle. It's great for kind of blue hour, sunset-y kind of shots like this. We can come in and apply this kind of a little bit of a magenta cast, which I like quite a bit. And as I drag that to the right, you can see I get more and more of that into my photo. Maybe give it a little bit more saturation, or excuse me, contrast, maybe a little bit more saturation. But this Seattle LUT has given me a, a completely different look to the photo. There it is before, and there it is after. And again, as I said with the last photo, you can still go in and use other tools to customize the look of the image. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take a product shot and show you just how vast of a difference I can make using a LUT. Okay, here we go. Here's a product shot. This is an old camera. In fact, I think it's sitting on the table behind me that I just took a shot of. And I'm going to go in here and stick a LUT on it. i got to figure out which one. Uh, I'm going to use this tritone. I'm going to increase the amount, maybe something like that. I'm going to increase the contrast as well, something like that. Now, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to Enhance AI. I'm going to give that a little bump. I'm going to go into Composition AI, and I'm going to make this a square. So I'm going to do something more like that. Straighten it a tiny bit. Pull that in just a tiny bit. I've recomposed the photo. Now I'm going to go into the Light tool, and I'm going to give it a little bit of bump in contrast, a slight drop in exposure. And I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit, and at the same time, pull up the shadows. Then we go into Structure AI, and I'm going to go ahead and just reduce that structure in the background. I really want to blur that out quite a bit. And of course, this requires a little brush masking. I'm just going to erase that from here because it's a smaller area versus uh, painting it into the background. So I'm just going to erase that structure reduction from the camera itself. I'm not really too worried about the straps. And so something about like that, I think, ought to do it for me. 
There we go. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this mask. And now I'm gonna go into details and I'm gonna give like a, you know, a 20, maybe a 30, maybe another 30, maybe a 30 on sharpening. I'm just trying to crisp that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go paint this in, click there and paste. And then of course I need to invert that, right? So now if I hit the forward slash key and show you my mask, you can see it's basically applied there. So what I did in the last tool, which was structure, I took negative structure in order to blur out the background, create more of that soft, subtle background blur. And then I added details to the product itself so that that would crisp up a little bit because it was a little bit soft. You see there's the before and there it is now. Much crisper and I think that looks a lot better. There's one more thing I wanna go do and that's split toning. And in the highlights, I'm gonna give that about a 40. And in the shadows, I'm gonna do about a 27 here, but I'm gonna move that into the blue. So maybe something about like that, and maybe pull that amount down just a tiny bit. So there's a quick edit using a LUT as the basis for my sort of transformation, but let me show you what we started with. That's what the photo started with, and that's where we are now. Very different, it's very much got a specific mood to it. Speaking of moods, let me show you the difference this tritone LUT made to this photo. So there it is with the LUT on. If I turn that LUT off, you can see it's a vastly different photo. Despite all those other changes that I did, it was the LUT, I think, that had the biggest impact on this chain. So there it is, with the LUT and without. So I like that quite a bit. It's quite fun, it's very powerful. I'm gonna do one more quick photo and this one will be a portrait. Okay, here's a photo I got from Unsplash. I'll put a link to the artist down below. Now there are some specific portrait toning LUTs down here at the bottom, but you can use any of these LUTs on any photo. So I could use a portrait LUT on a landscape and I could use any of these other LUTs on a portrait as well. And in fact, the one that I like best here is wooden, and I'm gonna go ahead and just increase that amount. I'm gonna go to about 75 or so, and you can see it's created kind of a rough, kind of desaturated look. So there it is before, a little brighter, a little airier, definitely a little bit more color. And here, a little bit more washed out and that sort of thing. And here's one of the cool things you can do is you can apply a LUT and then build a template out of that and save it, and it'll save that LUT, and then you can use that again and again. So if you have a portrait session, let's say, with this young lady, and you wanna create that same look, you can make all the necessary adjustments, including the LUT, save that, or I should say mood tool, save that, it's built into the template, and then it will use that again and again, so you can more quickly and effectively edit a group of photos if you want them all to have that same look to them. So that's the fun and the power of the LUT tool. I keep saying LUT tool. It's called mood, but it's got LUTs and it's really built around the idea of using these lookup tables to change the mood of your photo, hence the term mood for the filter. It's fun, it's powerful. That's how it works, my friends. That was a deep dive into the mood tool, concentrating on how LUTs can impact your photos. Hope it helps, hope it gives you some ideas, and mostly, I hope you have fun editing. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one, my friends. Take care and adios.